Stone box deck, playing a lot of these different attackers, and I was hoping I would see this this weekend, Frey. We haven't really had a chance to talk about what decks we wanted to see. It's that Armor Rouge powered up with the potential uh, really consistency and energy acceleration from Arceus V-Star. Yeah, this is a very cool archetype. I've seen it a couple of times on the ladder myself, like playing on the Pokemon Trading Card Game Live. And uh, at first when I saw it, I thought, oh, what's, what's quite going on here? Yeah, you can, you know, you've got the Arceus, but you've got Armor Rouge, but the flexibility you have with that Armor Rouge's flare off ability, of course, being able to move energies from the bench to the active, and then the flexibility of attackers that you have with that, as you mentioned, sort of getting energies onto the field with um, the Trinity Nova is a really, really cool deck. And uh, cool to see it here at 2 being piloted by Christian Labella. Yeah, of course, Christian Labella, top eight at the NAIC North American International Championships in 2023. Did play that Arceus Duraludon deck. That was uh, sort of Duraludon's last hurrah. This is uh, yeah, very when much. Arceus was sort of on top of the world. We saw Ian Robb also get second place with a very similar deck. And Ryan has been playing a lot. One of those big cards, the starting Pokemon here, not really what you want to see for Ryan. It is that terrestrialized Hoopa EX. I mean, to be fair, you say you don't really want to start with it, but that fighting type, of course, does mean it hits Arceus V for mm -hmm. weakness, so it could be a nice way to get a cheeky early easy knockout on it. It is here for that energy crush attack. We've seen this attack be super strong against Arceus, a card that loves to put lots of energy into play. We'll just be Artisan starting things off. Ryan will get to look through the deck, see what cards are available. And yeah, I mean, Hoop is a great Pokemon to have down, but this is the Lost Zone deck we're talking about. You need to use those Comfey flower selecting abilities. Speaking of which, we'll see the Comfey as the temporary selection here off of this Artisan. Yeah, yeah, I guess that is the thing, right? But obviously, Hooper is a great attacker, but you don't really want to start with it, like you said. It's a sort of, you always want to drop it as a surprise attacker. Almost by virtue of starting it, Christian is up thinking, oh, hold on, this is something I have to be aware of now. And he can't, you, Ryan can't really drop it as a surprise anymore, which is, uh, you know, not great for him. So will be that Comfey selected off of the Artisan. And Christian's not going to get a lot of value off of that, but can grab the Charcadet. So any extra consistency you can provide to a deck like this. Uh, it is playing sort of a thin Barrel line as well to support. Uh, this is an archetype that sort of popped off a little bit, Arceus. We've seen time and time again last year at the International Championships in Europe. It's a great deck towards the beginning of the format. It's got a lot of pieces already established. Your V Pokemon are already out. And this hand is looking actually really awkward here for Ryan. It's oh. just going to have to pass the turn over to Christian. And while you are going second, like you said, does have a lot of solid cards, fire energy to put in the discard pile, which is great because Christian is playing this super powerful Magma Basin Stadium in his deck. Oh yeah, Magma Basin, of course, so as you don't know, so it's a stadium that either player can use. Uh, it lets you attach your basic fire energy from your discard pile to one of your bench fire Pokemon, and if you do, you put 20 damage on it. Now, any acceleration in general is great. Now, in most instances, the damage might be a downside, but of course, we do note that uh, Christian is playing that Radiant Heatran, I mm -hmm. believe, so that uh, we're doing a 70 damage times the amount of damage count 
Cleansers on it, so yeah. that's going to build up very, very quickly the more Magma Basins you do. Yeah, I love Radiant Heatran. It's such a fun card to use. It's sort of like a ticking time bomb, so to say. Every turn you get to Magma Basin onto it, it starts out a little small, 140, and then builds up to, okay, now 280. That's a problem. Wait, I'm doing 420 now? That's <laughs> really a problem. So we will just see the Arceus V get grabbed. It would be great to put some more energy onto that with Trinity Nova and utilizing Ryan's Artisan that he put into play last turn to grab that Charka dead. Of course, Fire Off is the key ability here for Christian to move these fire energies around to power up a variety of attackers. Yeah, very important to make sure that you use your opponent's resources as well as your own. You know, the stadium's there, you may as well make the most out of it. And, oh, look at that setup as well. With the Squawkabilly able to put it down, Squawk and Seize, discarding nothing and drawing a fresh six cards. Christian is off to an amazing start right here. He hasn't even played a supporter card yet. And I don't even know if you necessarily want to at this position because you know your opponent doesn't really have a strong hand. They could be sitting on something like Chorus's Experiment, of course, going first in the Pokemon TCG. You cannot play a supporter card from your hand. It will just be another Nest Ball, and this is going to be an interesting choice on how Christian wants to maybe spread these energies out. There isn't necessarily a lot of threats. Of now, Lost Zone can sort of ramp up a bunch of cards in the Lost Zone. It can be scary to put energies when you're staring down that Hoopa EX with Energy Crush. I mean, we've sort of laid it out here. Excellent start for Christian. It's really going to be on Ryan to respond with this incredible setup that Christian has had so far. Yeah, and as much as you don't want to, you know, attach him in, you kind of have to, right? Ultimately, your deck is reliant on getting as many energy on the field as possible, and you kind of have to just accept that the Hooper is there. There's a threat you're aware of. You'll deal with it when the time comes. And what is a uh, place in your favor right now is that, you know, we're looking at Ryan, Ryan's setup here. What is it? Comfy and a Hooper, and mm -hmm. like, and uh, that Lost Zone is looking pretty empty right now. So it is uh, not a great start for Ryan at all. And that means you feel a little bit safer with this setup, knowing that it's unlikely that the Hooper is going to be able to sneak a knockout on you. So Nest Ball will grab another Charcadet, and there it is, that turn one Trinity Charge, powering up this bench. Arceus V also found that Maximum Belt, and that is a big card that Arceus gained with this new Temporal Forces expansion. Yeah, Maximum Belt is uh, able to do 50 more damage to any EX Pokemon, an absolutely amazing tool for Arceus to help it reach KOs that otherwise wouldn't. But going back to Ryan's side, we do see the first Chorus experiment of the game. And that was a top deck as well, really oh. needed that to uh, keep himself into this game. Arceus is a tough matchup when they've got 280 HP. Struggle to knock them out, and there's some tech Pokemon that Christian is playing that could cause a lot of problems, but this is sort of the downside of Chorus when you don't have a lot of other cards in hand. You really need a lot of pieces after a poor start. Is This is going to be a tough choice, and it looks like we may actually see that new Buddy Buddy Poffin hit the Lost Zone as Ooh. well as Comfey, so really just prioritizing the other cards in hand, which it looks like could be cards that allow... Ryan to maybe boost up these Lost Zone numbers like that Lost Vac. Yeah, I think the problem is taking the Buddy Buddy for off and doesn't do much for you, Ryan, because you don't have any switching cards in hand. Mm. Ryan has got nothing to like switch out with, so sure, you can bench the Comp Phase with a Buddy Poffin, but then what are you going to do with them? They're just going to sit there doing not much of anything. So we sort of get a first peek here at Ryan's deck is playing some interesting cards. We do actually see it looks like the Grass Energy in here, so uh, playing something like that Iron Leaves, mm -hmm. which we see towards the end. It's not going to be too important in this matchup, but this is the benefit you get when playing a toolbox style deck. You can sort of include a lot of different energies, and that's all thanks to Mirage Gate, which is really what lets Ryan's deck function. Yeah, it really feels like the Lost Zone, deck, uh, Lost Zone toolbox decks are now drifting more towards this multiple two prize attacker style. We see that, you know, it, the Lost Zone decks have kind of drifted between one prize attacking strategies and two prize attacking strategies, but there are so many good versatile two prize basic attackers in the format right now that making the most of them is just going to be the way that uh, this deck sees success. So all in on this Greninja, it seems. Big oh. two cards off concealed cards, but yeah, still not able to find any of these switching cards. Oh. And that is not what you want when you're staring down an Arceus V on the bench with a Maximum Belt. That's going to be dealing 250 damage if it can find a way to evolve into a V-Star. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is the problem with Lost Zone decks sometimes for you. I'm going to keep it honest. Sometimes if you're not able to build yourself up, build a big hand, have a lot of options, these great utility cards like Super Rod, like Mirage Gate, uh, they're great in the later game, but as of right now, they're just going to sit in the hand and really not provide a lot of value. Yeah, yeah. Ryan is not sitting on not much of anything right now. In fact, going to Lost Zone, one of those uh, Super Rods with that Lost Vacuum, get rid of the Maximum Belt, very wise choice, going to make it a lot harder, maybe even impossible for Christian to KO this Hooper. But Ryan is already quite far behind enough. The last thing that he needs is for Christian to get an easy two-price knockout on this uh, Hooper EX uh, with uh, the Arceus. And that's really why he valued that Lost Vacuum there off of that Chorus, just wants to remove that maximum belt. That makes a huge difference here when you're already off to a slow start. You can't give your opponent these easy two prize cards. So Christian will sort of have to reroute a little bit here, and it is going to just be that boss's orders. And uh, listen, 
Who needs Arceus V-Star? You can just use another magma, <laughs> use the magma basin you have in play, build this Heatran up, and now with that power edge, you're still dealing enough damage to knock out Kumfei, and Christian will be the first person to take a prize card here in game one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Arceus V does have a damaging attack. It is that power edge, just does 100 and, uh, was it 130 damage, so it'd be 110 uh, yep. after the double turbo, but more than enough to knock out Kumfei. <laughs> so what can Ryan put together? Another sort of tough choice here. I feel like you've maybe got to put this Radiant Greninja up. It's got a little bit less of a... Retreat costs. Now, Ryan did play that Lost Vacuum, so uh, there are now three cards in the Lost Zone because did get rid of the opponent's Maximum Belt. Uh, so now, what is going to be the choice here for Ryan? There is the potential to attack with Hoopa. Uh, we could see a couple Flower Selectings plus Colrus, and speaking of Colrus, will be the first card chosen to be played. And another five cards here to look at. Pick three in the hand, Lost Zone two. A few interesting utility pieces here to think about. Uh, Ryan does play switching cards, right? Just, 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 just <laughs> want to make sure, because uh, yeah. I'm having my doubts right now based on how these Coral experiments are going. Goodness gracious. That's that's the Pokemon TCG for you, Frey. Yeah. You just <laughs> have some variants sometimes, and yeah. Comfe is a great card when you can switch in and out, use flower selectings. Not only are there no Comfe in this hand, but there are also no ways to switch and use those abilities. Berg just looks like going to see the Cramorant, which is a really useful card yeah. to just put in some damage, maybe set up for some two-hit knockouts, but with Ryan already being at six prize cards, Christian did take a prize last turn at five. It's just going to be that heavy ball. That's sort of the easy choice. We didn't see any key Pokemon prize. And now here, what do you grab? There is a Nest Ball in the hand, so maybe prioritizing having that Forest Seal Stone. Of course, Star Alchemy allowing Ryan to grab any card. This is sort of the trick of the trade. It will actually just be that lightning energy yeah. sent to the Lost Zone. I think it's important to note the only V Pokemon that Ryan plays is that Raikou V. So if that Raikou V is ever prized, that Forest Seal Stone essentially becomes a dead card. In this instance, we know it's not, so, it, oh, so it's fine. But uh, yeah, kind of reliant on that one of to make your other one of work in that sense, which is um, can be a tricky thing with Forest Seal Stone. Of course, it only works when it is attached to a V Pokemon. It doesn't work on an, on an EX, so it does give, of course, that V Star power. So we'll see the Nest Ball played. This is just, I mean, it's early on in the game, so Chris Ryan is not out of it by any means. There's still plenty of Pokemon left to be played. But what do you do here to really get yourself back in this game? I mean, you know your opponent's hand is not super strong. Could be bluffing a little bit. I mean, playing that boss's order is definitely a great way to target down your consistency, your ability to just draw cards. Uh, but we are just going to see the Comfey grabbed off of this Nest Ball. And we may actually have to see this Radiant Greninja retreat out or bank off of this concealed card. Freya, what do you think is the correct way to sequence through the rest of this turn? Uh, it's so tough. And uh, I mean, I was going to say maybe I was I was going to oh, I was about to say maybe Ryan just grabs the Raikou V so you can actually use that Forest Seal Stone. But it looks like instead, no, Ryan's opting to not go for it. Instead, just going to attach it to the Greninja and vacuum it away to build up the Lost Zone numbers. And that is magic number seven being achieved. So Ryan will have access to play Mirage Gate if that's available. And here comes the sort of tricky decision for Ryan with not having a lot of ability to draw and filter through the deck to maybe have some poor cards. He's got a pretty tough choice here. Sort of debating between, do I get rid of this Cramorant? I've got two Gusting cards in my hand, and this is actually a really tough decision. One of those cards selected off of that Colrus, that Cramorant, will now go to the Lost Zone. So Ryan does have these seven cards in the Lost Zone. There's a lot of options here. Really, I've got my eyes on those two Charcadet on the bench. If Ryan does have that water energy, we could maybe see a Moonlit Shirk and take the knockout on both of those Pokemon. Oh, that could be devastating. There is no Mana on Christian's uh, bench, so yeah, no bench protection option. If Ryan does have the means to put this together, this would be a devastating uh, turn and would be a really great way for Ryan to come back into this game. It looks like no water energy, so I like this second option here. Grab the Hoopa EX. It's already on the bench. Power it up with this Mirage Gate. I believe there is a Dark Energy in hand, so this Greninja can retreat and use Energy Crush to take a knockout on this Arceus and respond. And that was a big loss zone there to get rid of that maximum belt the earlier turn because right now with how it stands, the only thing that can really take a knockout onto this Hoopa is potentially that Radiant Heatran or another Pokemon that Krishkin can, Krishkin can drop down and move the energies to. And this is exactly how you have to play if you're in Ryan's position, right? You know that your back is against the wall. You know your deck isn't operating the, the way it would usually like to, but you still have to make the plays to the best of your ability. And with all, even with all of those difficulties in the early setup, Ryan has still managed to get a Hoopa down and take a really meaningful two-prize knockout. And exactly like you mentioned, with the maximum belt got as well, it's a two-prize knockout that Krishkin doesn't really have an easy way to respond to. Definitely didn't think I'd be seeing Energy Crush get in there when Hoopa was released uh, back in Paradox Rift. But hey, listen, this is 2024. This is the new standard rotation. Anything can happen. 
as Christian will respond by benching this Mew EX. It does provide a little bit of consistency. Now, if it does get powered up, I mean, Hoopa EX, it's not a Dark-type Pokemon. It has terrestrialized into a Fighting-type. It is weak to Psychic here, Freya. Uh, yeah, it is. So uh, with that Genome Hacking Attack, of course, you could uh, copy the Energy Crush and uh, get a very easy sort of response knockout. So definitely a good option for him. And also with that restart ability, be able to draw some extra cards as well just to try and find more resources. There goes the Magma Basin again and, uh, and an attachment from hand. So that attack is now powered up. Oh, is that going to be enough? Yeah, that's enough. It is, yeah. 280 damage here from this Radiant Heatran getting in there to deal some big damage. Raging Blast taking the knockout onto Hoopa. And Christian has put himself in a super solid position. Three prize cards taken, three left to go. And Ryan now... Iono down to a four-card hand, just having this Comfey in the active, but does have that Buddy Buddy Poffin, so can finally get some more of these 70 HP Pokemon into play, if there's any Comfey left, and I'm not actually sure there's a lot left in the deck. No, Maybe it just like that it. mana fee, it looks like. By the way, it's important to point out, uh, like, I'm not sure if this is what you were alluding to earlier, but just looking at the deck list, it's not just that uh, Ryan can find Water Energy. He doesn't play Water Energy. Oh, wow. So, actually, Moonlight Shuriken is not an option for Ryan at all. It's a very unconventional way to build this deck. Yeah, we just see dark energy, grass energy, and lightning energy. So sort of this core of using Roaring Moon, Iron Hands, and that Iron Leaves EX. So really not having that option. I mean, it's one less thing for the Lost Zone deck, but this is how Ryan has chose to build this deck. He's at 2-0 right now. I think, yeah, I think maybe just in a position where this Buddy Buddy Poffin, since it's being played so late, is not finding a lot of value for Ryan in a position where... He really needs to respond and take some prizes before this Radiant Heatran blows up anything in his path. Yeah, the Radiant Heatran is just going to get scarier and scarier. It's already doing 280 damage, which I'm fairly sure, yeah, knocks out literally anything in Ryan's deck. So uh, you need to deal with that really, really quickly. Oh, but this Roxanne is going to be a very, very time to play to do that. <laughs> yeah, great time to use it. Christian has not set up anything like that 1-1 one, one, the barrel line at all. So it does have the Mew for a little bit of protection with that restart ability. But I mean, Ryan does have seven cards in the Lost Zone, so we'll have... Plenty of options available, can still use that Mirage Gate, can maybe use some more Flower Selecting. Sableye, and not an option in this deck, there are no Psychic Energy, so we'll have to sort of adjust how we see these options. Things like Moonlight Shuriken and Sableye are not on the table. And we are going to just see six cards drawn. I do see one of those Mirage Gate found off of this Roxanne, and we haven't seen Concealed cards yet, we haven't seen Flower Selecting, so how will Ryan play the rest of this turn out? So there is an Iron Hands in mm. Ryan's hand, right? So let's uh, let's do some thinking here. There's one Lightning Energy in the Lost Zone. I can't remember, did Ryan Lost Zone 1 earlier as well? I do remember seeing some, but I don't remember if he picked them or if he decided to get them away, because here's what I'm thinking. This Radiant Heatran is now prime for an Ampu very much. Mm. That is true. It will be knocked out by an Ampu very much, but Ryan's still got to find another Mirage Gate and a way to get this Comfey out of the active spot. There's now just a bunch of switching cards. I mean, those would have been great for Ryan early on, but without having any Comfey to support, it's really not doing a lot here for Ryan. No, it's really not. So it looks like instead, is that going to be finding the Raikou maybe coming down? Yes, I mean, with one Mirage Gate, that would be enough to power up and get the KO on this Radiant Heatran. Of course, we wouldn't be getting one prize instead of the two that you'd get from the Iron Hands EX, but maybe that's at this point, this is just what you need to do in order to have some kind of response. You cannot let this Radiant Heatran keep going at you. It is doing far too much damage for like not a lot of... Uh, yeah, prize investment. Seen Roxanne swing a lot of games. I'm sure Ryan is hoping that Roxanne can put in its weight. That Roxanne won't be a lie. It won't fail <laughs> him at this position. So uh, we do see the Mirage Gate. There's also a switch. And there is a little bit of sequencing here. I'd like to see Ryan maybe just play this Mirage Gate first to not draw into maybe some of those energy cards. But on the other hand, it's not bad to necessarily find energy. You can always use that concealed cards ability. So we'll just see the switch into the Raikou first and. Looks like Ryan will just be using that Lightning Rondo to knock out this Heatran and oh, really no. just hope that uh, there can't be any necessarily response here. What's up? Yeah, so going to go for a Fleet Footed first to draw an extra card, yeah. and then now we're going to go for the Mirage Gate. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, of course, very important to remember, of course, all of the, all of the uh, legendary beasts, of course, have this uh, Fleet Footed ability, both the Ente Suicune, which is now sadly rotated, and the uh, Raikou, just when it wants to put in, when it's in the active, you can draw a card. It's just very important to do just a little bit of that extra consistency. Does I think I had a counter catch off of that from what I saw, so mm -hmm. not going to be, I mean, you could use it right now, but I think at this point, no, you still have to deal with the Heatran. <laughs> yeah, that Heatran is a force to be reckoned with. That's why it's so good in this deck. Build it up, it's hitting 280 damage. Anytime you want to put up one of these two prize Pokemon, if you're not knocking out Heatran, Heatran's just waiting there to knock you back out in return. But this is honestly a pretty awkward prize routing here for Ryan. I mean, yeah. this is what Heatran does. It's a one prize Pokemon that forces you off your game plan. Ryan will knock this out, go down to three prize cards, but 
Christian's also at three prizes, and with that Arceus V on the bench, you've still got the Mew with the restart. Things are going to get a little bit awkward. It's really going to come down to what Christian can put together on this turn. Yeah, and that's exactly why, in an ideal world, you would have uh, loved to get KO with the Iron Hands, because then your prize mapping isn't messed up, and yeah. you can go 2-2-2, two, 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 and you're good to go. But uh, no, uh, Ryan only able to find one Mirage Gate, so can't put that together. So instead, it looks like it's going to be just making sure that there's nothing else he wants to do. Oh, actually, is going to go for the Counter Catcher on the Mew. Okay. Yeah, so this is an interesting play. It sort of puts you on a two-turn map to win the game. You can knock out this Mew, and then if you could put together an Ampu very much, or something like a Hoopa EX onto one of these two prize Pokemon, put yourself in an okay spot to close the game out. It's just always risky leaving that Heatran up, leaving that guaranteed knockout on the board. We're just going to see it, though. Lightning Rondo taking the knockout on the Mew EX. It is one of the downsides of uh, 180 HP, short amount of HP that Mew EX has. And now Christian has got to decide, what does the game plan look like this huh. turn? The Iron Hands has already come down to the board, so... I mean, Ryan is playing with an open hand at this point, saying, yeah. look, if you bring this Heatran up again to attack and I can find my last two Mirage Gates, then I could put together a very powerful Ampu very much to close this first game out. Yeah. Now, of course, we, can't also, we also can't forget uh, that Squawkabilly EX is there sitting on the bench, uh, sitting pretty, um, mm -hmm. capturing him a head uh, there from Christian. But um, with the Squawkabilly uh, being sort of like, like a target, it's a very easy way to finish out the game because it is weak to lightning, so it wouldn't take much for whether you know Christian Suits decides to knock out this Raikou or the Iron Hands on the bench. There will be a lightning type attacker in play in order to finish off this Squawk ability for the game. Yeah, Ryan has not played that powerful Prime Catcher A spec yet, but maybe a little bit harder to play that when your opponent's playing Iono to disrupt that hand you have. But that is a really solid two Ooh. cards to draw into. Uh, that, of course, that emergency board and that Colrus's experiment. It looks like Christian just without having any support set up to draw more cards, is all in on this Radiant Heatran. Did, of course, find that Arceus V-Star and has not used Starbirth yet. And I think Ooh. Christian is sort of seeing and look and deciding that this is going to come down to this turn here for Ryan. Otherwise, he's in an excellent spot to just take this last prize card. So we'll see the Starbirth get used. Christian using that V-Star power to search out any two cards he chooses. And it's going to just be a pair of those <laughs> Armor Rouge. <laughs> Yeah, evolve both of them up, right? Just, uh, I think, does this put both of them out of range of Ampy very much? I, I, I'm not sure, it's not, to be fair, it's not that relevant in this instance, because uh, you care to score completely anyway, but uh, yeah, just get them both out, why not, right? <laughs> yeah, Armor Rouge does have 130 HP, so it okay. would still be in range of Ampy very much, but you've got that Heat Trend sitting there, no reason to overcomplicate things. Absolutely. As there it is, Radiant Heat Trend putting in that work yet again, knocking out that Raikou V. We'll have to see if Ryan can put together a powerhouse term. That's a great way to start things off, though. Colrus's experiment. We don't see any Mirage Gate, though, or something like a Super Rod oh. to put some more of those Comfey potentially back into the deck. Yeah, there are no Prime Catcher either, of course. Mm -hmm. Very important yeah, key piece to find. Um, there is a Snorlax there. You could maybe piece together a KO on a Squawkably with that if you can get it powered up. But yeah, no, Ryan not really finding like the extra dig that he needs in order to uh, put this all together. It's going to be very, very tricky to carry this on. Yeah, let's not forget, though, that one Mirage Gate is still stuck in the top of the prize card. So oh, of that course. is a big piece that Ryan doesn't have. Really, that Iron Hands, all it really did that last turn is it just sat on the bench to clear a space out of Ryan's deck when something like this Iono came down. Will have to be some sort of a play to use Prime Catcher, and that Snorlax may be the final hope that Ryan needs, but... I'm trying to think with this hand, I don't even know if there's a combination of cards off of this flower selecting that can get Ryan to this spot. No, I think you're right, honestly. Of course, you're only getting one card at a time, right? So it's, uh, you can maybe, yeah, nest ball for a company just to try and dig some more, but I think with the amount of cards that you would need to find to pull this together, you, can't, you, just, you just can't really do it. It's all going to come down to this Prime Catcher. The big thing here to think about as well, that Iron Leaves EX does have that Rapid Veneer ability that allows it to switch into the active spot, so that could act as an extra switching card here for Ryan if he needs to really burn a lot of these, use a bunch of flower selectings, but because, again, that Iron Hands EX as well as that Mana Fee is in play, I mean, the Mana Fee does have some more use than the Iron Hands in this position. Uh, really, there's not a lot of bench space to allow you to use multiple flower selecting abilities. And the problem is, you need to win this turn. Christian only has one prize left, so mm -hmm. even if you can take a knockout on the Heatran, that uh, Arcus just, just, can just come up and take a very easy KO. Maybe not on the Iron Hands, but you know, Christian could just put together so many easy ways to just find his last prize. And that's, a, that's a tough flower selecting, an energy card that you really want to find to maybe dig a little bit deeper. And that Prime oh. Catcher, you got to take that Prime Catcher. That is the only way you're really staying in this game. One more flower selecting. What can Ryan find to give himself hope in this game, number one? Oh. And it's both super odd, but I don't think there's any Mirage Gate in this hand. No. For Ryan to use, I believe. 
he's pretty much got no gas left in the tank at this spot. It is too little too late. Needs to find a super rods much earlier. I don't think Ryan can put anything together at this point. Maybe you prime catch it to try and stall, but it doesn't really feel great when you need that to piece together your win. I mean, you can't yeah. stall off with that fire off ability. You oh, can no, just exactly. move the energy wherever you want, and there's enough in play that nothing can get trapped with this Radiant Heatran dealing enough damage to knock out any Pokemon that stands in Christian's way. Yeah, so Ryan is completely stuck here, and I think he's recognize this as well. He's going to have a look through. Ryan's very much the kind of player to try and evaluate every single possible option before conceding a game, but uh, I think he knows when it's over, and yet with that, Ryan picks up his cards, and Christian Rivella will take game one. That was the last option there for Ryan. <laughs> he said, you know what? I understand. I can't win this game. Yeah. Picking the cards up. Christian Labella moving to, still at 2-0, and oh, but moving up a game in this set with Arceus Armor Rouge. That was not on my bingo card for this weekend, no. Fran. I acknowledge the deck, you know, I tried that a little bit on PTCG Live. I saw what the deck had potential-wise. There was a few matchups that were a little bit tricky, but this list looks really solid for Christian. Performed excellently in that first game, putting him in a solid spot to remain undefeated on the day. Absolutely. And let's be fair to Ryan, right? His start was absolutely horrendous. He did not really get set up the, the way he wanted to. And uh, he was like, when you're starting with a Hooper and maybe, yeah, you did take a nice KO early on, but then afterwards you just are not really struggling to respond to things. It's uh, going to put you in a tricky spot. So yeah, Christian, very well deserved win there. We're going to go on to game two now. Uh, let's see, let's have, take a look at back at that game one. <laughs> Yeah, we saw early on that Arceus V get in there. We don't see it attack a lot, but it can deal some solid damage. Really just going after Ryan's poor start early on. Even with that Hoopa, it was that Radiant Heatran that was the MVP in that match. Just blowing up anything that stood in Christian's way. Yep. At the end of the day, Ryan just with some unfortunate prize cards with just not having the necessary pieces to close the game out. Just didn't have enough gas in the tank. And Honestly, Freya, that's sort of what happens to this Lost Zone deck a lot of the times. If you really look at why this deck is unable to close games out, it's just because of that late game disruption and just not having those pieces to put together these powerful combos. The deck can achieve, but it's difficult. Yeah, and especially because Ryan wasn't able to set up his board in a way where he could dig his way out of it. We saw that was exactly his struggle in the late game. When you get disrupted as Lost Zone box, it's great if you have all those copies on the board, you can do a bunch of slash selectings, but Ryan wasn't able to set up at all. So when he really needed those eggs at the crucial time, he just didn't have enough gas in the tank, as you said, to actually get the last two prizes. Oh, and we oh. see that key card there for Ryan, the Hoopa EX in the prize cards, as well as one of those Barrage Gate. That is a card that you really don't want to see. You can find it with something like that Hisuian Heavy Ball that we do see Ryan is playing, but never feels great to have that in there as we are getting straight into game number two. Ryan will be kicking things off. Does start that Comfey with the flower selecting ability. And right away, a card that Ryan would have liked to have later on in the game, that Super Rod will have to be sent to the Lost Zone, but there's other great cards in the hand to support Ryan's first turn. Yeah, that first uh, flower selecting was uh, for between a Super Rod and a Buddy Buddy Puffin, and uh, Ryan's definitely going to want to pick that one on this instance, of course. Uh, this is one of the great new trainer cards from Temporal Forces. Let's you get two basic Pokemon from the deck with 70 HP or less and put them onto your bench. A phenomenal setup card for so many decks, including uh, evolving decks and for getting your comfies out in Lost Zone decks. When Battle VIP Pass left us, Buddy Buddy Poffin was here to rescue us. I know lots of people love this card a lot more than Battle VIP Pass, but you don't have to compare them. Battle PIB Pass is gone. I'm sure we're going to be saying Buddy Buddy Poffin for many years to come. Yes. It, it is that thing as well where Buddy Buddy Poffin, it's nice because even if you don't see it turn one, it's still a useful card later on, right? That's like a nice benefit that you get from it, unlike with Battle VIP Pass, of course, where you can only play it on the first turn of the game, which I think is what perhaps where you know some of the comparisons and some of the distaste for Battle VIP Pass came from. <laughs> and look at this card we don't see a lot in the Pokemon TCG standard format, that ditto with that transformative start ability. I really like it here in this Lost Zone deck. There's lots of Pokemon that you'd love to have in the active spot at the end of your turn, or just to, in this case, maybe just have another Comfey in play. Yeah, and we're talking about the comparison between, you know, Battle VIP Pass and Buddy Buddy Poffin. This is almost a way to turn Buddy Poffin into a pseudo VIP Pass, because of course you can put that Ditto in the active, and then if you want to, you can you know, to convert it into a basic EX from your deck. <laughs> so lots of switching cards this time. I'm sure Ryan is happy to see those here in this opening hand. Now the question is, how do you sequence this through? We are just going to see the switch card played first, and Ditto's going to get in there, give his wave goodbye, <laughs> hit the discard pile, and I'm sure it will not return for the rest of this game. So we'll see what the choice is. I mean, most of the time, Comfey seems like the most logical, but this is also a good way to get something like Radiant Greninja down. There are a lot less ways to search it out, as Buddy Buddy Poffin only grabs Pokemon with 70 HP or less. But it's just going to be another Comfey. Ryan going to keep the flower selecting train going, and with this hand, could bump himself up to three cards in the Lost Zone on the first turn. Yeah, so in this instance, uh, they're just acting almost like as the one-card deck fin, right? Just because you could have you grabbed the... 
the comp phase straight away, but in that instance, just get Ditto out of your deck and uh, just uh, fin your deck by one more card so that you can uh, dig into all the other things that you want to set up. So, one flash letting gone. Let's see what he finds off the second flash letting. It's already off to a much, much better start in game one, so Ryan's got to be feeling pretty good about his position compared to that. Yeah, building up the Lost Zone is the key, so anything Ryan can do to just get that number up, get himself closer to seven, is going to be solid. It's sort of an awkward choice here. Yeah. I feel like Cramorant is a card that has a lot better utility in other matchups, but it's still a great tool to set yourself up, put on pressure to these lower HP Pokemon, or set up those two-hit knockouts. does value that over that basic Dark Energy. And we'll see Flower selecting number three to close the turn out here for Ryan, and it's got plenty of great cards to work off of for the following turn. Nothing to complain about here yeah. for Ryan. Yeah. Oh, and there's that Roaring Moony X as well. Ooh. So, oh, and another Dark Energy. So this is actually tough. So Dark Energy is the energy that Ryan plays most of. He plays four of them. But with two Lost Zone ready, you're already putting a lot of pressure on them. It's, it doesn't feel great. But I think because when you're talking about, you know, a card you have three of left versus a card you only have one of, you kind of have to make that choice. Yeah, and this choice can be influenced a lot by the fact that Ryan has checked his deck. He knows that that Hoopa EX is not in the deck. So you might need that Roaring Moon to be able to take these one-hit knockouts if you're unable to find that one copy of Hisuian Heavy Ball. It's the price you got to pay sometimes. Playing a little bit higher counts of the Dark Energy. It's kind of become standard in any Lost Zone deck that plays Roaring Moon is playing four copies of Dark Energy. You'll see the Radiant Greninja come down off of the Nest Ball, and I mean, you could see Concealed cards as well. I don't hate that. Just fill the hand up a little bit more. But, I mean, Ryan has more than enough here in this first game. Yeah, so... Okay, Conceal cards gets fired off with two drawn less bosses orders and was that the Prime Catcher? I think it was. Yep, Prime Catcher is a great card to have yep. later on. Now, there is always, of course, the ability for it to go to the bottom of the deck with that Iono supporter card. I think Ryan's good for now. Uh, could also see Kramer and get benched, but I think, again, Ryan's in a solid spot. Uh, these players are kicking off. It looks like we're going to have, hopefully, a lot closer of a game than that first game here for our two competitors. Sure seems that way. It looks like uh, Kramer is going to go down after all, but after that, it's just going to be a pass. And uh, over to Christian, let's see what he can do. Oh, <laughs> speaking of, I, I know there it is right, right away. It uh, could put that Prime Catcher to the bottom, but uh, going to want to play out the rest of his hand first. We do see there, it's sort of an Ultra Ball. So going to want to probably want to find a Charcadet, I imagine, just to, try to start, get the setup going. Hey, there's a card that Ryan's going to have to read, that Armor Rouge Oh, EX. yes. <laughs> Don't let it fool you. Armor Rouge has got that great fire off ability, but Armor Rouge EX has got an attack that can get in there. Of course, it's got that ability that gives it uh, essentially minus 80 if it's at full HP. It takes 80 less damage, so it's essentially a stage one 340 HP Pokemon that could be hard to take down. We'll see what Christian wants to grab. Does, of course, have the basic necessities you want as an Arceus deck, Arceus V, an energy attachment, and a little bit bonus, some ways to draw cards to hopefully find that Arceus V star on the second turn. Yeah. Now, there are, there's, a, there's a lot of things that, that Christian could go for here. I'm just trying to think what would be like best for him. So we did talk about the Chalk of that already, but it could be the chance for maybe a Squawk ability if he wants to really sort of dig early on. We do see it's there available in the deck for him, but no, in this instance, just going to go for the Chalk of that, get that, uh, your course, basic down so you can evolve it to your stage one as soon as possible. And then maybe we're we just going to see our, an Iono after this? There wasn't, I didn't see much else in the hand to work with in this instance. Yeah, not a bad way to end the turn off, draw some more cards. I think the only choice here for Christian is how greedy do you want to get in this spot? Is there ever a world where you... Don't attach this fire energy and then play something like uh, an Iono and then hope to draw into double turbo energy so you can Trinity Charge. That is the advantage of playing uh, this Armor Rouge is you can technically miss the attachment on turn one and still be okay because you can Magma Base and then move the energies off. But looks like Christian will just play things safe. Uh, and actually a smart choice here from Christian. Mm. Just going to pass the turn over, has the Arceus V-Star plus Disruption for the following turn. But I mean, with Ryan having some solid, powerful pieces in hand, this could be the opening he needs to maybe take a two-prize knockout this turn. Yeah, it is. Now, I mean, you know, from from Christian's side, what I'm actually probably thinking is, you know, if I just uh, do the setup but then don't play a supporter, I might be sort of giving the impression that my hand isn't as strong as it is. Maybe Ryan will figure out and think, oh, maybe Christian's just holding on something really strong to disrupt later. But there's a little bit of a mind game going on here. Will be another energy card sent to the Lost Zone off of that Coalhorses experiment. There's only 10 in the deck, so Oof. we're at almost a third of the energy cards unavailable for the rest of the game here for Ryan. Will be Flower selecting next. That's a pretty solid choice. Yeah. But of course, going to want to keep those super rods. As we are now one Flower selecting ability away from Mirage Gate being unlocked. Ryan having the potential to 
we take a two prize knockout on this turn. That would be absolutely devastating. Uh, and uh, exactly the start, but Ryan would want, good considering uh, how game one went. But yeah, seven is the magic number for Mirage Gate. There's currently only six. And then Switch Cart into this Comfe will get him there with that seven, with that flash selecting and the escape board, or rather, not the escape board, the uh, rescue board yeah. there um, means that uh, Ryan will be able to retreat into any attacker that he wants to. So yeah, Ryan off to a phenomenal start here. So looking at this hand here for Ryan, seeing what is that maybe last piece that he needs? Or a seal stone, that's not a bad card to have if there's something like a Raikou V maybe, but if you pinch the Raikou, you then fill your bench up so you really can't use a better attacker. And with Christian's bench only being at two, this Raikou is only dealing 160 damage. That's not going to be a not enough to knock out one of these Arceus V. Yeah, that's the problem. The, the, if you bench the Raikou V, you're essentially committing yourself to not getting there. So yeah, I think uh, why isn't that instance? It, it doesn't feel great, but I think you just have to get rid of the Forest Seal Stone. The Snorlax is going to be a much better attacker for you in the long run, and the Forest Seal Stone is just not something you're going to be able to pull off. Yeah, and that Lightning Energy, if that was something maybe like a Dark Energy, if we saw two of those get Lost Zoned early on, then Maybe Ryan could have gone in with a Roaring Moon and taken two prizes with Frenzied Gouging, but instead, he's going to have to dig for one more piece, maybe something like another Mirage Gate to power up one of these powerful EX Pokemon in the hand. And even considering using something like Concealed Cards first, I would like to see this maybe a little bit earlier. And speaking of which, a great two cards to find there does find that second Mirage Gate, and now there are plenty of options available, especially because there's even that Iron Hands EX and the Prime Catcher. So maybe that Charcadet EX could be in danger to an amp you very much on the second turn here for Ryan. And uh, finding the Super Rod as well means that uh, you can actually put those energies guided back in to make sure you have enough energy for amp you very much. But no, it looks like in this instance, just going to put down the Roaring Moon and just uh, take the KO on this uh, Arcus in the active. Or, or maybe the Bench one with the energy, actually. That is an option as well. You do have that Prime Catcher, but it's like, is it worth using a Prime Catcher for that? I wonder. It's, it's tough. Yeah, this is sort of the tough choice. You really have to use your Mirage Gates as best as possible. and. I think with his hands here, Ryan may actually have to use the second Mirage Gate just to be able to retreat this Comfey out of the active, but can't even retreat because it's already used that emergency board, I believe, uh, so. Uh, yes, so I think you just have to Mirage Gate for one engine and then use Prime Catcher, of course. Uh, it does let you switch as well as switching out uh, your opponent's uh, Pokemon, so, but I mean, burning it just to kind of switch when ideally you wouldn't want to is not the best feeling. You really want to use that to take a KO in an opportune time, but maybe, maybe this is the prime moment to use it. Yeah, and this is, again, one of the advantages that this Arceus deck with the Armor Rouge has is if this is Arceus Garatina, if you chase the only Arceus with an energy, your opponent most likely is not going to be able to attack you the following turn, but because of that fire off ability and Magma Basin, Christian can still put together a combination of cards to respond to this Roaring Moody X, especially because it's going to hit itself for 200 damage with that frenzied gouging attack. Yeah, so I guess maybe in this instance instead, you're yeah, going to go for the second Mirage Gate and uh you can put Dark on the on the Roman. You can put a Grass somewhere else, of course, uh, as we mentioned earlier, this attack does play Iron Leaves. So you just put it on a Comfy and then move it over to you know, attack with the Iron Leaves later. It's absolutely a solid option. Yeah. I mean, usually it's okay, but that Comfy does have a rescue board on it. So it will be a Pokemon that can always retreat without discarding energy. And I'm going to have to point out that Ryan has already lost Zone 3 energy and yeah. burning a lot of these Mirage Gates that, and just also played, I uh, believe, one of those Super Rods. So there's a lot of resources that are slowly getting rid of, getting out of play. And there it is, that powerful A-spec Prime Catcher switching both Christian's active Pokemon with one of his bench, and Ryan will also choose to switch his active out of his position to go to this Roaring Moon. And this is an excellent here, turn here for Ryan, has put full aggression on Understands. This is what he needs to do against this Arceus Armor Rouge deck. And there it is, Frenzied Gouging, knocking out that Arceus V does damage himself up to having just 30 HP remaining, but now Christian left with no energy cards in play, just this Arceus V and the Charcadet. We'll have to find a solid combination of cards here to potentially respond with a hit to this Roaring Moon. Yeah. And I guess in this instance, although, yeah, it's not ideal, at the same time, this, uh, when you're, even though Christian has the option to, you know, get put, put all the pieces together to uh, find the Trinity Nova this turn, it's still, it's one more piece that Christian now needs to find because Ryan opted to target down that Arceus uh, with the fire energy on. Yeah, let's make sure we do everything correct here. Yes. Ryan did take two prize cards that turn. Uh, that Roaring Moon. 30 HP left and Christian will just evolve into Arceus V-Star and play this Iono. Let's see if there are the pieces available. And I think just had to find one of three pieces to make this happen. That Armor Rouge, the Magma Basin, or the Double Turbo Energy. And because that Armor Rouge was found, 
This Arceus V-Star can use that Star Birth ability to grab the last two pieces that are needed to allow Arceus V-Star to attack with that Trinity Nova. Yeah, so it, it, we talk, I, just, I was just talking about how it's a hard combo to put together, but of course, when you have an ability that lets you search your deck for any two cards, suddenly it's, uh, you only find one piece, then the other two you can just uh, get uh, whatever, depending on whatever you find and what you're missing. So yeah, this is the power of Arceus V-Star in full form here, as we're going to see yeah, straight away, going to grab the double turbo energy and the magma basin off of the star buff. Yeah, and that is a great Pokemon to use that Magma Basin's effect on, slowly building damage counters up onto that Radiant Heatran. And there's a card we haven't talked about yet, that Del Fox V coming into play. Freya, talk to me about how this card is super solid in this matchup. So this is the option that these uh, Arceus Fire decks have to do bench damage. Of course, so the uh, Del Fox could do 120 damage to the active, and then 120 to a bench Pokemon, and he lost zone 2 Fire Energy from it. So, you know... Usually these decks don't have that much of a sniping option, as it were, but with the Delphox, yeah, you can just dock out two combos in one go. Easy as that. So it did take using that Starbirth ability, but that's a small price to pay for knocking out the Roaring Moony X, tying things up at four prize cards, and disrupting your opponent down to a four-card hand. Let's see after that disruption what Ryan can put together and does find that one copy of his Suing Heavy Ball. Now Hoopa EX can be taken out of the prize cards, swapped with that Heavy Ball, and with six energy in play, Energy Crush is going to have a great time to easily knock out this Arceus V-Star. Yeah. The only problem, of course, is that uh, we know that Ryan's all of Ryan's Dark Energy are currently not in play. There's two in the Lost Zone and two in the Discard Pile. So if Ryan wants to put together a knockout with this Hooper, he needs to find one of his remaining Super Rods. We know there's two left in the deck, but although one of them did just get Iona to the bottom, unfortunately. I believe Ryan is actually only playing three copies of Super Rod. We usually see a lot more, sometimes four copies in this deck. So. We'll see off this nest ball how many of those are still available. And I think there's only one super rod left in the deck there's at this one. point. Oh. Wait, was, that, was one prized maybe? I'm not sure. I think we may have seen one get burned earlier on from Ryan to be able to use that Mirage Gate turn earlier oh, on. Oh, possibly, yeah. So in which case, uh, that's going to that's gonna be tricky, but it looks like a nest ball, not going to grab anything, so going to leave that bench slot free means you can still put down the Hooper. I think in an ideal world, Ryan would like to put together this energy crush, but it's just whether he has the pieces to do it. He needs to find a super rod if he's going to do it. That uh, is absolutely key. Yeah, and while that nest ball didn't grab anything, it did shuffle the deck, so those cards on the bottom are oh. now shuffled in, and oh, there oh, is... That. Wow, look <laughs> right away, solid two cards, the first two off this chorus, that's Super Rod and Mirage Gate. As long as there's a way to get one more Dark Energy, and Mirage Gate cannot grab two energy of the same type. So Brian's getting close. He's got the Mirage Gate, the Super Rod, but we'll need to find one of those Dark Energy before he plays this Mirage Gate, potentially. So I guess, yeah, you Super Rod uh, both the Darks back in, and then maybe you try to dig with a Flower Selecting. Mm -hmm. Maybe you, you know, dig with a uh, Conceal Cards. If you have a, yeah, you have the Grass Energy in hand, you can Conceal Cards with. But yeah, you need to find one of the Dark Energy, at least. So Ryan is pretty much aligned himself to this play. Does still have that scary threat of the Del Fox V on the bench. We do know Ryan is playing that Mana fee with that Wave Veil ability to block the bench, so that could be one more piece maybe that Ryan wants to get down this turn. We will see the Super Rod get played, so as you said, Freya, two of those Dark Energies shuffled back in, and final choice, it will just actually be one more Grass Energy, so does not want to put that Roaring Moon EX back in the deck, understands that Gotta maximize your outs, just put cards back that are gonna be beneficial, and while that Grass Energy isn't beneficial now, it can always be discarded later on with concealed cards. Yeah, exactly, it's, it's, uh, pr it's a lot more relevant to you given your, your current state in the game, so definitely rather get that back than rather than Rory Moon that could maybe take a knockout, but it's gonna be a liability to be knocked out back again because of frenzy gouging. So, Flash Lesson number one, let's see, what does Ryan find here? It looks like it's another course experiment. Oh, and an Artisan, uh, oh, hmm. Right, take your read of Delphox here, interestingly enough. I think you're just trying to figure out how it actually works. It does, uh, as we mentioned earlier, 120 to the active, 120 to the bench. But yeah, and I believe this gets really awkward because th I think that last Comfe is in play. So there's really only that one bench spot for this Hoopa if it wants to come down and attack. So even if you want to put Manaphy into play, there's really not a great option as it stands at this point. There's no Moonlight Shuriken option. Here we go, two more cards with concealed cards does find this switch cart, so can confidently retreat into one of these Comfey and use this fl final flower selecting ability. Ryan needs to find a dark energy here if he wants to attack with this Hoopa. Let's see <laughs> what he gets. Tension is building up. It all comes down to this and finds a switch. Oh, you can look at one, one more, more card. <laughs> this, is, oh. this is you go down the rabbit hole. You think it's done, and then you get one more card, and you get to see two more cards. and. It never ends with this deck. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It's just, it's just one more, just one more. Spin the wheel one more time. There we go. Switch into this last comfort. Does Ryan find what he needs? 
There's only two in the deck, and this deck has to be pretty thin by this point. Ryan's played lots of Chorus. Do we see the dark energy? No! no! Oh. And now this is emergency case scenario for Ryan. What do you do in this spot? The Hoopa cannot attack this Arceus V-Star. There's tons of energy in play. The Armor Rouge is already set up. And it looks like it's just going to be benching this Manaphy. <laughs> and I don't even think Ryan has any other attack to use besides something like Spit Innocently, which is... Yeah, I mean, putting some pressure onto this Arceus V-Star, but it's nowhere near the same effect as just taking a clean one-hit knockout onto it. No, I guess I guess not. And uh, at the very least, so knowing that you know, Ryan can't pull off a knockout, the Manaphy is by far the best thing to bench, because now you deny Christian from taking a two-prize turn. There's only single prizes are, are out on the right side of the field. The Manaphy is going to prevent the Delphox from doing any bench damage. So although it's not great, this is the next best option you could have done if you uh, did miss the the, uh, the Dark Energy off of all of these uh, Flower Select things. So Spit is certainly coming in and it's going to do 110, soften up this Arceus, and uh, it's going to be on Christian to respond again. Yeah, man, if he at least making this not the worst case scenario, can protect, protect the bench as of now. Just see some more cards get played for Christian, but this is almost like a bonus turn. I think Christian was maybe expecting for this Arceus V-Star to potentially go down. It's always possible when you know your opponent is playing. A card that's sort of in the deck to deal with fighting weak Pokemon, being that Hoopa EX. It will just be Tails on the Capturing Aroma, so a basic Pokemon grab be another one of those Charcadet, and I feel like if you're a Christian, you gained a lot of information in that first game. I'm sure it has a hunch at this point that there's really no need to fear a Moonlight Shuriken at this point. It's just going to be benching the Charcadet, playing Research, and does also get another Fire Energy in the discard pile. That means more energy put into play with this Magma Basin. Yeah, at this point in the game, it's been you know, two games in. You've seen Ryan go through most of the deck. You must realize at this point, Ryan's not playing any Water Energy, and that, that, that does change how you play a little bit. Uh, so you still want to get another Charcadet down, just in case your one Arm Rouge does go down, so you can evolve into another one, but you're not fearing that double knockout as much, and that does uh, mean you can sort of breathe a little bit easier and sort of play it safe a bit more with uh, how you develop your board. So, really counting the resources here for Ryan, because this is all that this Lost Zone deck comes down to. We know that one Mirage Gate is still in the prize cards, and two were burned to attack with that Roaring Moon. So with one Mirage Gate left, you're really kind of limited on what attackers you can use. Iron Hands is going to have to be sort of a slow, sort of a projected, <laughs> like, hey, I'm benching this, I'm attaching to it, yep. I kind of want to use this in a couple of turns. <laughs> So that's going to be what's going through Christian's mind at this point. What is my opponent going to want to attack with on the following turn? As finally, everybody's favorite beaver, that Bidoof, coming down into play. Yeah. Can potentially evolve <laughs> into a barrel next turn. We did also see one of those Roxanne get lost on for Ryan, so a lot less disruptive power on the table. And here we oh. go. We're going to see uh, Armor Rouge come into play. Can put some pressure on here uh, using that Flare Cannon to a flame cannon, excuse me, and it actually gets the perfect knockout because oh, of that yeah. burn <laughs> special condition. So 90 damage, taking a knockout, and this is excellent because not only are you taking the knockout, but you're out of range from something like that amp you very much. Right, of course, for 130, just a little bit you know, too much for the amp you very much to take a KO. So yeah, now Brian's going to have to find a Gustin card of some kind to you know, bring up a bench Pokemon if he wants to try and keep up in this prize race. Otherwise, he's going to be only taking one prize, and that's really, he, he needs to t be taking prizes more quickly. I mean, we've not pointed it out yet, but there's only five minutes left on the clock. There's not a lot of time left in this game. Yeah, I don't think three games are going to finish, so Ryan is looking at best case scenario, squeaking a match point out of this set between him and Christian Labella. This is where we see that a lot of these resources, a lot of these energy cards down is really going to potentially come and cost him. Now, that Cremorant did set up something potentially like that Raikou V from putting together a knockout with Lightning Rondo. It is now hitting for 220 damage, and we're going to see that last Mirage, Mirage Gate in the deck. There is still one prize, let's not forget. But it will be played, powering up this Rykovi. We haven't seen flower selectings be used yet. We haven't seen any supporter cards. There is still that boss's orders left in the deck. Ryan has really got to think about how he's going to put together two back-to-back -to -back two prize turns. Otherwise, Christian's got more than enough energy, attackers on board, to be able to plow through anything that Ryan's going to be able to put together. It is interesting that Ryan's already committed to his Raikou V. To me, it's almost like Telegraph, that a sort of a boss's orders was more likely, but with not having it in hand, committed to the course experiment. Is there, I guess he can find his one of Countercatcher? That must be what he's thinking for at this point. Yeah, so just getting those energies out of the deck to have a better chance at finding them, but sequencing well or not, there were no Countercatcher found off of these five cards from Cole vs. Experiment. The deck is getting eerily thin for Ryan. Yeah, we're so not going to count anything out. We know there's ways to put cards back into the deck, but it's always got to be something on your mind. 
Yeah, it is. And we do have uh, the flower selecting has not been used yet, so can dig a little bit more. Again, we're just spinning the wheels on those uh, companies to try and find the last pieces that we need. It does have to, we do have access to concealed cards as well to try and dig a bit more, more just to find this counter catcher. It's going to be very important for Ryan to find it here. So here's the first two. Oh, find it off the first draw of the concealed cards. Yeah, both remaining gusting cards in the deck, that counter catcher and the boss's orders. And I'm finally seeing the vision here for Ryan, putting these grass energy on the Comfey. Now, while they don't look like they do much, we haven't seen that Iron Leaves EX get put into play, and that can always move energies around. So maybe this is what Ryan needs. Take a two-prize knockout here onto something maybe like that Delphox V that can be knocked out. I think that's probably what I'd like to see here from Ryan. Take out that Delphox and then leave this Arceus that's already heavily damaged in play so it can be knocked out by something like the Iron Leaves, which will deal enough damage. And there it is. Just as I mentioned, the Delphox V coming into play and Lightning Rondo dealing 220 damage. And I'm sure Christian is asking himself, was that trade-off of having my Delphox V get knocked out worth putting that Bidoof into play? Yeah, it, it's, I mean, maybe yeah, Ryan, or maybe Christian was feeling the potential uh, disruption card and wanted the Barrel as an extra out. But uh, yeah, now he's got to be thinking, uh, hold on, though, Ryan's just going for a 2-2 map here. Maybe, it, I mean, it's just tough to say, but there is the Barrel coming out there, so uh, Christian's going to have like a lot of dig to go for here. But um, there is no way for Christian to win on this turn, not with uh, the, the Delphox gone. Yeah, and Christian also plays no card like Sharon's Care or Professor Turo's Scenario to oh. remove Pokemon out of play. So this Arceus V-Star is not going anywhere. It's in play. It has a lot of damage on it, 170 HP remaining. It looks like Ryan has potentially found his prize map to get himself at a 1-1 tie. Let's not count Christian out yet. Christian can still possibly disrupt everything, and I think that's what he's doing here. Yep. In the handout, do we see an Iono off of these four cards from Industrious Incisors? No. It was, I don't think we do. Incisors not going in and providing that value. It was two Nespals and uh, double turbo and a fire. That's what he found off of the Incisors. <laughs> oh, but then uh, does uh, put down uh, is that the Gouging Fire EX. Yeah, so that's not something we've seen come down yet. Yeah, great card against some things that can get walled out like that Alolan Vulpix. Just a good card to have, 260 damage is a great number, but not going to be super relevant in this game number two. That Radiant Heatran does deal enough damage, 280 minus the 20 from the double turbo energy. And here we go. Ryan at two prize cards left. Does he have the pieces needed? And I think there's already there. Yeah, yes, the it. Iron Leaves can use that Rapid Vernier ability. Switches to the active spot, move all these energies attached to the Comfey, attach for turn, and play that boss's orders, Ryan. Using all of these different attackers to excellence, <laughs> taking game number two in a close one. And that is an absolute masterclass in showing just how the Lost Zone Toolbox deck can really show its power, where you know you have all these different attackers using them at the exact right time, and Ryan massively piecing that together to take a win in that game too. Phenomenal stuff. Yeah, never showed that card throughout the entire set, I believe. So, I mean, maybe Christian got that towards the end, but I feel like if Christian had maybe saw that line, not benching that final bench Pokemon, yeah. could have maybe got him out of range from that Delphox being knocked out, but that's sort of the advantage you have of playing this Lost Zone Toolbox deck, especially a little bit more unconventional of a build where you're not playing Water Energy, you're not playing Psychic Energy for Sableye. You gotta make your opponent maybe question things a little bit more and maybe not have as solid or maybe a little bit of an improv game plan coming into this match. And it's so tough, right? Because you're thinking, okay, what's more likely here? That, you know, the last bench Pokemon I put down is gonna be the, you know, enough to make the Raikou KO by two prizer? Or do I fear disruption and wanna give myself the option for a barrel to draw out of like a Roxanne? So, you know, and these are the very tough decisions that you see in these highest, highest levels of play. Yeah, 10 seconds left. So as long as both players can get some Pokemon into play and not do anything like draw some extra cards or make some gameplay errors. It looks like this match is going to be a tie, but we'll let these players play it out and see what they have in store. Take a look at the prize cards. We do see that maximum belt in the prizes. I mean, if this game went out, that is a great card to respond to Hoopa, and, and we see things playing fast already. Christian already done with his first turn, attaching to this Arceus V, passing the turn back over to Ryan. And with that Buddy Buddy Puffin, I think as long as time is called here, really don't see this game nah. finishing in the three allotted extra turns once time is called. Yeah, not only that, but um, Pedro, there's another two prizer in Ryan's hand as well. So yeah, both players have more than enough uh, reserve Pokemon to make sure that, that, they, uh, that this game is going to not conclude and therefore the match will end in a tie. So we'll just get confirmation once time has officially been called. We'll see who is turn zero. And from there, I think we're just going to kind of figure out if this game can conclude. But it's looking like both these players, they'll still be undefeated, but we'll just walk away with one match point each. Yeah. And, uh, and you know, it was an absolutely phenomenal game too. You know, sometimes 
you know, these, these, these things do happen, and especially you know, these Lotto toolbox decks do tend to take a little bit uh, longer to execute their, their game plan. So it's like, not, not entirely surprising here, but it is just how it, it goes sometimes. Ryan just yeah, doing some setup here, playing it out. So we see a switch cart after a first flower selecting. Another flower selecting coming down finds, uh, oh, there's that Iron Hands EX, which we saw be a threat to potentially, but never actually be used. Just going to keep that lightning energy. Yeah, I, I, I don't see this ending in anything other than the tie, to be honest. Yeah, I think as long as Ryan just benches Manaphy, I think there's no way for him <laughs> to get his board wiped at this point. Or, yeah, I think as long as a fourth Pokemon comes down, Delphox can't take three Pokemon out of play within two turns. So, nope. uh, it looks like I'm getting word that time has been called. So, uh, Ryan will be turn zero. Christian will get two turns to play the game, and Ryan will get this turn plus an additional turn. But, uh, I mean, that was crazy game too. I mean, Ryan's deck was sort of failing him a little bit in that first game, just with some unfortunate prizes and just not being able to get the ball rolling with flower selecting early, but we saw in that second game how powerful this Lost Zone deck is if you're really not getting the disrupted like Ryan was on that second turn of the game, and when you're able to just keep building the hand up with flower selecting and get to that magic number seven on the second turn. Yeah, It's, a, it's up to three already here, so... I mean, if we think about how this game maybe could have played out, obviously we're not going to see it here, but uh, it looks like, again, Ryan's off to a very solid start, so I, I almost kind of wish we could have seen how this game could have uh, played out because there, it seems like there's a sort of a strong start from both sides again, but uh, yeah, just a pass, nest ball, and uh, that's going to be turn one of time, I guess. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, that's one of the tough things about Pokemon is you want to just see these players come to a victor. That second game was such a treat to watch, but that's how Pokemon is sometimes. 50 minutes, especially when we have those long games, it's... A lot of times just not enough for players to finish three matches and I think that's going to be a theme for this weekend is seeing how many ties both people are going to or our competitors are going to have. I saw even in round two lots of players moving to 1-0-1 one, oh, and one. so we'll have to see how things finish out between everybody. Yeah. Catching Aroma coming in uh, just uh, heads there. We're going to find another evolution Pokemon just maybe find another Arceus V-Star if you want to. Why not right? But uh, yeah at this point it's I'm very curious, actually, about something else. I wonder how many other people are playing what Christian's playing this weekend, because it seems like a very like surprisingly solid pick, honestly. Like We were talking at the start, right, about how Arceus variants are very good in like early meta games because they're just like solid and reliable of what they do. But like this Fire variant, it has like so many different attacking options. Yeah, and that Delphox V is a big tell. So we'll see what Ryan can maybe draw off of this flower selecting. He does have access to concealed cards as well. And we'll see how this game concludes. Ryan really putting on a masterclass here, and Christian's deck is so unique. It's always a pleasure to see some newer archetypes. Now, this deck did exist before. I, I know some people who have been playing this deck before uh, in the E block, before, of course, we rotated. This is our first tournament of the year, playing the new standard rotation. All cards from the F block on are legal for play. And we're just going to see things continue to chug. Both of these players just going to play everything out, make sure that they'll see maybe where this game ends or how things are situated. There will not be no Pokemon grabbed off this Hisuian Heavy Ball. Really interested to see as we sort of get into more of these rounds. There's lots of archetypes people are hyping up, and this always happens at the beginning of a rotation. Oh, this deck is good. Oh, this beats Charizard. Or, yeah, nothing's going to take down the top dog. Or, yeah, what was good last year or last rotation will still be good. There's a lot of questions to be answered, and we will get those answers throughout this event. Yeah, we absolutely will. Another flash lights are coming in, so up to five already. Now, I don't think uh, I saw a cause experiment in hand, but there is a concealed card, so maybe to try and find it to get to that magical number seven. Oh, then there it is. Yeah, and the mana fee as well can yeah. just throw that mana fee down to make sure the bench is safe at this point. Ryan could potentially even put together an attack this turn. There's now going to be seven cards in the Lost Zone. Uh, we did see a few of those EX Pokemon, but that Hoopa is still available, it seems, and is already in the hand as well. So this will bump Ryan up to seven cards in the Lost Zone and does also have that Mirage Gate. So we could see Hoopa get in there, take a knockout, and have Ryan take the lead in this third game. Yeah, uh, Raikou V and Arsen uh, going to the Lost Zone there. There is the magic number seven, but it's... I mean, what do you even like go for the KO with here? Oh, there is. The, oh, there's that Ditto. All right, flexing a little bit. You know, it's always a good feeling to just get your favorite Pokemon and yeah. play. The Ditto has the splop attack. It can do 10 damage. You know, that would be the, the ultimate way to go out. That you would, yeah. Attach to the Ditto, say, yeah, if this game went on any longer, my Ditto would have wreaked havoc on your board. You, you wouldn't have anything to deal with him. It is very important to note that the Ditto stability only works on the first turn of the game. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but Ryan literally just benching it for style points at this point. <laughs> see if Christian can do anything, maybe a little bit amusing here. 
Maybe attack with the Mew. Let's see. Oh, he's oh, going after the Ditto. No way. <laughs> Bring it up. He said, oh, is he going to copy Splup? Okay. He oh, said, uh, if you're not going to do it, I'm going to do it. <laughs> Copying Splup. You know, I love to see these players having fun. It's a little heartbreaking when you can't pull a win out early on in the tournament, but these players put on a great show for us. Two amazing games in that third game, ending out with a little bit of fun with a Splup. Both these players going at 2-0-1. Oh, if I see <laughs> at any other point in a, in a streamed game a genome hacking, copying Splap, I will eat someone's hat. <laughs> yeah, I bet that wasn't on your bingo card viewers. I'm sure you guys didn't expect that, but uh, that's what makes Pokemon so interesting, and that's why these international championships are such a pleasure to watch. Yeah, it absolutely are. So this game ending in a tie, as we mentioned, so 1-1, one, one, a really, really great series. Uh, game one, of, uh, Ryan off to a harsh start, but still managing to almost uh, pull it back very impressively. And then, yeah, game two with an absolute masterclass in the uh, Lost Zone Toolbox, so absolutely great game to see. So both these players, I think, are going to be pretty happy walking away with the result that they did. And yeah, let's take a look back at some of the, the key moments from that match. Yeah, both players seems close to their invite, so trying to pull out those last points. International championships are a great way to get points, no matter if you're placing super high or even for players at 256 or the top 512 players, it's super important to do well. That first game, though, all Christian showed how Radiant Heatran is an excellent Radiant Pokemon to use in that deck with the Raging Blast attack. And Ryan potentially had a line there using that Raikou again with that Lightning Rondo to knock out some of those lower HP 2 prize Pokemon, like that Mew, just Ryan didn't have enough steam in the tank, and in that game too, even with the Hoopa prize, it was that strong first turn in combination with building up the Lost Zone, even though it took a few Mirage Gates to get this Roaring Moon powered up, Ryan was still the first person to respond, and Christian still had a great response there with that Armor Rouge, Magma Basin, Double Turbo, Arceus V-Star combo. Yeah, it was exactly what we, like we're talking about. This is one of the few Arceus decks that can actually do that, and then able to, you know, with the Magma Basin and the Double Turbo, search off the Star, ba star Birth, Put, put together the KO and power up that Delphox, and then Ryan responding in kind with a you know, chorus experiment, digging through everything that he needed to to piece together a just a return there. And uh, even though it did, wasn't quite ideal with how he responded, because he ended up softening up the Arceus of the Cramorant, that ended up being really relevant later on to finish it off with the Iron Leaves. Yeah, what well, looked like an unfortunate miss for that Dark Energy ended up just being a little bit of a plan B. Just hitting with that Cramorant, saving that, using Spit Innocently, and setting that damage up on the Arceus V-Star to be knocked out by the Iron Leaves. This is our first real time we're seeing Iron Leaves come in on this stream and put in that work. And I mean, listen, with 22% of the field being Charizard, we may see a lot more of that Iron Leaves Prism Edge throughout this weekend. Yeah, it's going to be one of the key tech attacks, I think, for a lot of decks, of course, uh, with uh, that uh, Charizard uh, being such a popular archetype as it is, um, definitely something we're going to see a lot of over the course of this weekend. So that was only our third round. We're now about a third of the way through. For those players who, or viewers who are unfamiliar with these international championships, they follow a very similar structure that we see through the regional championships that we have throughout the year, where players will play nine Swiss rounds today. Then from there, if you have 19 match points or more, three points for a win, one point for a tie, zero points for a loss. You move on to the second day, keep your record, and you play six more rounds. And from there, it's crazy to think about that we're going to cut our field down from over 2,500 players to just eight. Yeah, it, it is going to be an absolute brutal competition. Now, this isn't the only competition going on, so we do have the community choice vote going on over this weekend, where we've already cut to a top eight bracket, but uh, we get you guys at home to vote between the, what, these, what you think is going to be the most impactful card from Temporal Forces. So let's have a look at that community choice bracket now and uh, see what are we going to, what, what we put to do. So we have, so we have, uh, we have Prime Catcher beating out Roaring Moon in the uh, Supreme Jeez. Fire earlier. Yeah, that, that was... Is a Landslide right there for Prime Catcher. And listen, I'm not the biggest uh, Roaring Moon fan. I 100% agree with that. Yeah. But I mean, listen, that's like the the nine maybe ancient fans in, in the entire <laughs> yeah. Twitch chat over there. So you know what? It's it's your choice, chat, and that's what makes these so fun. It is. All right. Okay. So, uh, but right now we have a uh, yeah. The next match is Iron Crown X versus Cypher Maniacs Code Breaking, and uh, I will be taking Cypher Maniacs Code Breaking in this instance. So uh, I guess I'll start things off with uh, yeah, fighting my corner, as it were. So. Cypher Maniac's Code Breaking is one of the most impactful supports from the new set. It is helpful for so many setup decks because, of course, its effect allows you to take any two cards from the deck, put them on top of the deck, shuffle the rest, and then put them in any order. You can combine that with so many draw cards, like you know, a barrel or you kind of a poker stop to find exactly what you need, which essentially turns that card into search deck for any two cards. And for so many of the setup decks that make use of it, it's a great way to get yourself going. I think it's something that makes Chen Pao a lot stronger. It's uh, you know being going to be used in uh, Goldengo as well. You can set up and uh, draw the cards with coin bonus. 
Because there are so many decks that Slice Maniac uh, pairs well with. I think it's going to be a phenomenal impact. But card. Freya, I've, oh. I've got to I've got to throw you back a little bit. You know, drawing cards, finding cards is great, but how do you win a game of the Pokemon TCG? You deal damage to your opponent's Pokemon, and what's better at dealing damage than? doing 20 more on your future Pokemon. Listen, if you're an Iron Hands lover like I am, this card is a gift for you if you love taking more prize cards. You know what's better than dealing more damage? What? Dealing more damage and taking more prize cards. <laughs> and Cobalt Command is an excellent ability. It's even got a great attack to go through the mana fee as well. It can deal 50 damage to multiple Pokemon. Listen, we're still early on in this format. We saw how powerful Power Connect was on Deoxys EX, and that was only 10 damage per Pokemon. Now this does 20 for each Pokemon. Whether you're poking with Maridon, whether you're hitting hard with Iron Hands, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, it's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, all yeah, I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> okay. All right, but so we've made our arguments, but now all of you guys watching on Twitch, uh, you can go ahead and vote and see who made the most convincing argument, or maybe you want to ignore our arguments, and maybe you just want to make your own, own mind up. But obviously, you know, you're going to agree with me. No, it's, it's me. Listen, it, it, Cypher Maniac is like a Mallow reprint, right? We don't have Zoroark GX in the format anymore. How good could the card be, right? <laughs> I mean, you say that, but we have a lot of cards that do something similar to what Zoroark did, so yeah, I, I don't know. It's, uh, I, you know, it, it's funny considering how I'm the one who was actually playing back when TDK was a thing and uh, you weren't, I, it's, uh, you know. Listen, listen, we don't, we don't talk about that. You know, I've done my history research, so that's as good as playing during the time, right? Isn't that, isn't that the same thing? I, 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 I'll credit where credit's true. I am impressed at your past knowledge. You know what? I appreciate. You know what? It's okay. We can have we yeah. can have some some friendly exactly. banter here. And, exactly. Exactly. And, and be okay. All I'm saying is, if you guys played TDK back then. Okay. <laughs> okay. I have to. I have to ask though. Like, you played TDK, I'm sure. In, yeah, yes, in your it, yes, it is. And I'm sure you played a little bit of the new standard format with the Iron Crowns. Yes. Between the two decks, what do you enjoy about each compared? So, so how can I put this? I, I think what's interesting is the difference in like the way that Future Box has evolved. It seems like the Iron Hands focus is like the main thing going on. Like the actual future box where you play all the different attackers doesn't seem to be doing quite strongly. Whereas with TDK, you had the Lugia, which took extra prizes, but that was more of an option rather than anything mm -hmm. you focused around. So it's kind of interesting seeing those two like side by side. I think that both had their, their merits. Like TDK is very fun to play for all those that toolboxing you can do, but it feels like the current iteration of future box where it is just like Iron Hands full focus, it's like so, so straightforward. Uh, and uh, you know, you're just taking prizes, you're taking knockouts, and you're so, so mega aggressive, which I think is a really, really cool thing. So I think they both had their merits and they're both cool in their own way. For those unfamiliar, TDK refers to Thunderous, Deoxys, and Kiram. That was a deck that happened during the 2013 season. Actually got second place at that World Championship. Yes, so it did. If you guys want to learn a little bit more about history, go watch some of those old World Championship VODs there. A pleasure to watch. And we'll see what Twitch chat has to say. We'll see what Twitch chat votes for. I mean, that was a landslide in that first vote. I mean, these two cards, I think, are on a lot similar of a, yes. of a standing than Prime Catcher <laughs> and Roaring Moon. Prime Catcher being an ace spec card. I mean, when that card first got revealed, I remember looking at the translation. I remember translating that card and being like, oh, so it does... And then I switched that, and oh god, yes, we have Guzma back again on an item. And uh, we thought it couldn't get more powerful, but yeah. I mean, we'll be talking about this in a while. Maximum Belt has sort of surprised me a little bit in yeah. its usage and how powerful it truly is in this format. It is very much the case when Prime Catcher came out. We thought we looked at it and we thought there's. This is going to be the staple, right? It's going to be like computer search all over again. Why do you play anything else? But no, the way it's actually played out, we've seen a lot more variety in Apex style compared to what we've seen uh, before, and that's actually been a really cool thing to see. Of course, we're going to be seeing more A-Spec cards in our upcoming expansions that come out. I'm excited to see how things can get even more wild. A-Specs are such a cool design. It's yes. all these times like Radiant Pokemon where you are limited to how many or what type of card that you can put into your deck. Some decks have easy choices. For example, Genesect, of course, had that G-Booster yes. A-Spec. But like you said, lots of cards or lots of decks really like to just play that one A-Spec. Prime Catcher seems to be that general A-Spec that if you don't have a better option to play, just play Prime Catcher. It's just a better version of Boss's Orders. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, a Boss Orders in item form, or Guzma, Guzma in item form, maybe is uh, yeah. better. That's uh, going back a little bit, not as much as uh, G-Booster, but going back a little bit. Of course, uh, that Sporter that basically did the same thing, like you, you know, switch uh, your opponent's active and then switch your own as well. A phenomenal, phenomenal card. Yeah, if we're talking about 2013, you want to talk about pre-errata Pokemon Catcher? Oh. That was just... Woo -hoo. That was, uh, Pokemon Catcher, as you know now, you have to flip to bring up your opponent's active, but it used to just be you play the item, and you just got to, essentially, it's just uh, boss's orders on an item card. Yes. And there was another card that could bring back them from the discard pile. I, I don't want to get in. I didn't even play during that, and I'm already stressed out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. It was, it was a different time, different time. And uh, I, I, don't, I don't want to, I don't want us to end up like having to put the sepia filter on as we go back. Oh, back in my day, blah, 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 blah. But uh, it was, uh, yeah, different time for sure. And um, 
that era was fun, but I think I honestly prefer the way things are now. It feels like a little bit more fair. Like uh, with um, issue that you have uh, when you were just uh, yeah have you know Pokemon catcher that you just play as an item. Uh, it really, really favored basic decks because you can just like, pick off the evolving basics so easily. Well, the future is now, Freya. Let's take a look.